I'm Wild Morcos. Uh, I'm a graphic designer in the MFA program in uh, Rhode Island School of Design. I'm from Lebanon. And the nice thing about being from Lebanon is that when you grow up, you learn how to speak several languages at the same time without even realizing. So early on, I understood how language is important for people to communicate and for them to be able to preserve their language through uh, writing public books or sometimes writing uh, personal diaries or poems. Uh, so my grandma does that. She writes poems. This is her notebook. And I remember when we used to uh, gather around for dinners, we would urge her to go get her notebook and read, her, read us her poems, and we would always love them. I mean, we loved them because they were about us. She writes poems about herself, her children, her grandchildren, her country, and her relationship with God. So I decided to give her something back, so I stole her notebook for a couple of hours, and I scanned it. And I proceeded to... Uh, redesign it in a way by combining a pattern that looks like her needlework and photos that I took around her house and by typesetting the poems on a book, in a book. That became somehow uh, her memoirs written in poems that she wrote but filtered through my lens and my understanding of things. Um, so this was a secret project but all the family was collaborating without her knowing. And at the end we just made a, a secret surprise party uh, which was also a book launch where we surprised her with a book and she was signing the book for everybody and giving it to them. Uh, she felt like a superstar for one night. I mean, this project was really important for me because I just realized how it's important like, with a small artifact, like a book, how it could mobilize like, with the whole family to come together around this small item. But it also allowed me to understand myself better. Um, through working with her poems and see all these connection points and disconnection, how, I'm, how I still relate to, to her and in other ways I don't. An Italian philosopher said something, knowing thyself is a product of the historical process to date, which deposits in you an infinity of traces without leaving an inventory. What Gramsci means, or at least what he, I think he meant, is that the person we, you are today is actually a result of all the experiences you've been through and all the memories that pass. So I, for the next project I was like, Hmm, I'm, I'm going to try to do my own uh, infinite traces, of, or try at least to. And for me, those traces were visual cues of memories and things I used to listen to, conversation I've had, places I've been to, or people that I've talked to. Then I tried to uh, distill them back into small narratives that eventually became those uh, poster, or if you want to call them a sort of painting or whatever. And each of these could tell like a story or a narrative, and it became like a way to map my own... Uh, memories through objects that I assign typographic treatments to them because objects, objects are silent and typography has this uh, power to give voice to silent things. For example, the last one on the right, um, the big Arabic type says Yalil, which means O night, which is a, a way to start a lot of classical Arabic songs. And it's about uh, going out and partying in Beirut and being in the cab and things like that. Now, if you look at these four posters, realize that the Arabic is big and it's acting like a title, whereas the Latin is small in the background but it's helping the narrative go. And that's something that graphic designers do really well, which is hierarchy and assigning different functions for things on a, on a visual plane. But uh, sometimes these bilingual uh, or multilingual um, scripts don't have to work that way. And that was the case for the next project. I was invited by the Hutt Foundation to participate on creating bilingual typography with a Dutch type designer, Artur Schmal. And the workshops were happening between Amsterdam and Dubai. Um, so Arthur was inspired by the vernacular Dutch lettering that is found on signage and what he called imbalance proportion of letters. And I've always been fascinated by uh, old archaic uh, Arabic uh, lettering, which is called Kufi because it originated from a city in Iraq called Kufa. So it became this conversation between cities that I found interesting. But what mostly fascinated me about this type is the fact that it was chunky and modular and heavy and geometric. And in a way, it resembled more the Latin typography. And I thought it would be a way to start. Uh, and while we're doing this, we realized that what's important in this project is that we're not designing an Arabic counterpart for a Latin typeface that already exists, like a classic Helvetica, let's say. Instead, we're starting them both from scratch and simultaneously. So um, we're asking the question what it means to design bilingual typefaces of two scripts that go in opposite direction. 
and what it means to balance them visually. And realized that it's actually an exchange, a reciprocal uh, learning process where the design of one typeface would inform the other in a way that we, they would not only meet halfway, but they would travel together to tell stories. It's a really interesting time for Arabic typography today because finally the uh, technology has caught up with the complexity of the script that we can include a lot of ligatures, contextual alternates, and open type typography in a way to bring back the human touch to Arabic typography. So this typeface was used on a series of book covers that, uh, in, in completely different ways that uh, every book tells a different story. The one on the, in yellow says a toy maker, and the one right next to it on the right in blue says a little bit of death. And th that's the funny thing about designing typefaces, that you're basically d designing a tool and you're giving it to people to appropriate it and recontextualize it in ways that you have not thought of. The last project I want to talk to is a project that I collaborated with two friends of mine, Andy Chen and Camilla Affendor, uh, with Civilian in Conflicts. This is their earlier material that they had. Um, uh, civilian and conflicts work with uh, heads of government and the NATO and operates in countries like Libya to negotiate better conditions for uh, civilians in conflict zones. And the trick question when you're working with NGOs that work with people is how do you balance this need for this uh, NGO to present itself in a corporate way that is trustworthy for funders, for example, without denying it the, um, the chance for expressing the people it's representing. Like how do you design communication material without resorting to generic design tropes like a corporate default blue color or unexpressive typography or uh, logos that reduce people to uh, uh, humanoid symbols or uh, victimizing photography that looks uh, taken by journalists from the outside. So we're thinking what it means to be in a conflict and we realize that even in conflict zones, life goes on and people keep going with their lives. And the, the way conflict registered itself is actually by leaving traces after it's done or the aftermath of, of this catastrophe. And we were, we were thinking, how can we design something to give voice to these people? And again, typography can do that. So we thought we need a typeface that expresses this sort of uh, traces and scars. We went back to calligraphy and we thought that calligraphy is the way the stroke moves to define the letter. And we thought, well, what if this uh, stroke moves always pointing inwards to the center of the letter? What will that generate? So in a way, we created lettering the, that is inside out for a world that is inside out. And we created the whole lettering system. And this became their major logo. Uh, uh, some letter that registered this sort of trauma, but at the same time retained some elegance and dignity. And we proceeded to design their collateral, combining it with images that do not shy away from showing the real the reality of these people, but also does not present them as specimen from an outsider's look. And I think that's the challenge of graphic design. One of the challenges is that we are giving the responsibility to talk for people, to express their voices. So how do you do that while preserving their dignity? Thank you.